In the picturesque village of Lansquenet Sous Tans, nestled in the French countryside, the arrival of Vianne Rocher and her daughter, Anouk, stirred a sense of curiosity and unease among the villagers. With her dark, cascading hair and vibrant red dress, Vianne seemed to carry an air of mystery and intrigue. It was during the season of Lent, which is a 40 days period of abstinence and self-restraint, that Vianne decided to open La Celeste Praline, a small chocolaterie on the village's main street. The scent of cocoa and spices wafted through the air, luring passers-by into the cozy little shop. The windows displayed a kaleidoscope of delectable treats, from velvety truffles to intricately designed pralines. Each chocolate creation was a work of art, crafted with precision and infused with a touch of something magical. As the village's moral guardians discovered Vianne's audacious decision to open a chocolatery during the sacred period of Lent, they were appalled. Reynaud, a man of rigid principles and strict adherence to tradition, saw Vianne as a threat to the village's religious harmony. He used his position as mayor and his sermons at the local church to condemn Vianne's chocolatery. He urged them to resist the allure of the chocolates and to remain steadfast in their faith and self-denial during the season of Lent. However, the allure of La Celeste Praline was undeniable. The townspeople, their spirits weighed down by a cold winter and the burdens of their everyday lives, found solace in Vianne's tantalizing creations. They would step into the shop, drawn by the warmth and the comforting aroma, and emerge with small, carefully wrapped packages of joy. Vianne possessed an ability to sense the deepest desires of her customers. With a gentle smile, she would guide them to the perfect chocolate, each one seemingly tailored to their specific needs. A single bite could transport them to moments of pure bliss, allowing them to escape the monotony and drudgery of their routines, even if just for a brief moment. Reynaud, determined to quell the rebellious spirit that Vianne had awakened, resorted to increasingly desperate measures. He orchestrated campaigns of slander and misinformation, painting Vianne as a witch, a seductress who used her chocolates to ensnare innocent souls. He hoped to turn the villagers against her, using fear and prejudice as his weapons. However, Vianne's spirit remained unbroken. She continued to serve her customers, offering a momentary escape from their worries and a taste of pure joy. In this turmoil a sense of camaraderie and support began to emerge among a group of women who had found solace within the walls of the chocolatery. Sharon, a vivacious and outspoken woman, found herself drawn to La Celeste Praline from the moment she stepped inside. The rich aroma of chocolate and the warm welcome from Vianne captivated her, offering respite from the monotony of her life. Denise, a quiet and reserved woman burdened by her own secrets, had long admired Vianne from a distance. She had often peered through the shop's window, yearning for the courage to step inside and indulge in the forbidden sweetness. Armande, the elderly woman who had found kinship with Vianne, also became a part of this newfound sisterhood. She shared stories of her own youth, tales of rebellion and unconventional choices. Josephine, having escaped her abusive marriage, sought refuge and support among these kindred spirits. Her journey of healing and self-discovery resonated deeply with the others, who welcomed her with open arms. Encouraged by Vianne and her circle of friends, Josephine found the strength to pursue her long-held dream of opening a beauty salon. Denise through her friendship with Vianne and the other women discovered her talent for writing, her words carrying a depth and beauty she had never before realized. Denise mustered the courage to share her writing with the world, finding her own voice amidst the chaos and noise of the village. The village's women, who had long existed in the shadows of societal expectations, began to question the limitations imposed upon them. They gathered at La Celeste Praline, their sanctuary, where they found support, encouragement, and a newfound sense of belonging. As the villagers succumbed to the irresistible allure of La Celeste Praline, the once steadfast Comte de Reynaud finds himself caught in a web of contradictions. Guilt and self-doubt gnaw at him as he secretly indulges in Vianne's chocolates, wrestling with the knowledge that he has condemned what he himself desires. The moral authority he once held over the villagers begins to crumble, leaving him vulnerable and questioning the foundations of his beliefs.
Vianne, with her intuitive understanding of people's desires, offers him a taste of redemption. Continuing the village transformation, Vianne organizes a grand masquerade ball. They let go of judgment and prejudice, forging new connections and rediscovering the joy of genuine connection. Vianne, having witnessed the transformative power of her chocolates and her presence in the village, reflects on her own journey. In the final pages of Chocolate, the village of Lansconet Sue's Tans stands transformed. What began as a battle between tradition and liberation has evolved into a testament to the power of love, acceptance, and the resilience of the human spirit. In the final moments of the novel, as Vianne bids farewell to the village that has forever been changed by her presence, the readers are left with a sense of hope and possibility. As readers turn the final page of Chocolate, they are left with a renewed belief in the inherent goodness of humanity and a lingering craving for the sweetness of life itself. For in the world crafted by Joanne Harris, the power of love and acceptance transcends the pages of the book, reminding us that, just like a piece of chocolate, life is meant to be savored, shared, and celebrated. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to QuickBooks, like and comment below.